Today on Isolation Nation, he's back by popular demand. Kevin Bieksa, here's one of the letters we got. Hey, Isolation Nation, can you bring back that crappy defenseman? Who else? All I know is, you know, I'm a person and I'm trying to help and all I can do is support you. In all seriousness, the man is so funny, so extraordinary, so amazing. He actually made a joke during a between period interview. We got a lot of shots there, and uh, Schneid's made two uh, huge saves for us. Um, just kidding, I can't even remember what they were. <laughs> but that's a good thing for us. What's that longtime NHLer up to now? I'm security. Man, how long since that guy played in the NHL? Plus, Tara Sloan. We only got 15 seconds to play her music, otherwise, they drop us from Facebook. Already, go. Seems to see how much I'll de- Still don't even know you. I, I. And stop, and we made it. Tara Sloan on Off the Record, a show that I hosted years ago, so many times. If someone would have said to you, one of you, Tara or you, Michael, will be hosting the NHL Awards in the future, who do you think it would have been? And the winner is Mark Giordano. Uh, so the mystery continues like how did that happen sloan the fact that i mean you were uh a a beloved guest on otr and you and i got to be buddies and you were you were at the time you were doing music obviously joy drop and then solo and then back to joy drop uh and i was obviously not doing anything but talking about sports and now here you are hosting the nhl awards you know how that makes me feel do you well, I'm sorry, but actually, no. my my broad, <laughs> I, I got. You know to say, how my, that makes me feel. If good, I think it really makes me feel good. good. I'm so proud I think it of you. Makes you feel, yeah, it makes me Be- feel so good. Because my broadcasting career was kicked off in no small part thanks to you. You helped me make my very first demo reel. Truth. So. Um, you know, I forgot that. I owe, I owe a lot to you. So Okay. Well, my point was that uh, how I feel is that I'm uh, really proud of you. I think you're you're awesome. And uh, yeah, good to see you. And uh, I think we caught, you, caught a quick glimpse of him, Kevin Bieksa. Kev, how are you? Good. Good. Thanks for having me back. This is the highlight of my day. Really? Although, it, you know, the bar is pretty low, right? You know, you're, uh, have you no, gone outside? I'm... Have you, like, you obviously live in uh, Newport Beach um, and you have different rules. You live in a different country. Uh, like, have you gone anywhere? Uh, just today we went for a drive. We got, uh, we supported one of our local restaurants. We picked up some breakfast sandwiches and smoothies. We drove down to the beach, which is fully open and packed right now. And we just kind of parked along the side of the, the road and just ate our lunch and, and, and watched all the people interact and spread Corona everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, last time we spoke when you were on the show, which I thought was great. And that's why, in all seriousness, why we wanted you to come back. You said you had driven up to San Francisco with your son just for fun. You got out, you went on the Golden Gate Bridge, and then uh, you got back in the car and drove home. And we all in my house thought that was kind of weird yeah did i tell you about that i didn't i wasn't sure but uh, it was just one of those things where we were cooped up for a while and obviously wanted to follow the rules and not go out there and and, and spread our germs so we decided just to go for a drive the one day wake up early we didn't even get up that early we left at like nine o'clock or nine thirty, and we just drove up the coast until my son wanted to go all the way to san fran and what else better to do so we kept driving we literally were 10 minutes once we got over the bridge, went in the viewing area, took a couple pictures, and then right back in the car and drove home. So it was it was an eventful one day during the quarantine for us. Tara, does that appeal to you at all with your 10-year-old daughter to uh, drive uh, 10 hours there, 10 hours back with 10 minutes in between? Uh, no, my daughter doesn't last more than, I would say, half an hour at this point. So no, it wouldn't be a lot of fun for her. It would be a lot of fun for me, though. Like, I, I have felt small amounts of exhilaration just crossing the city for various reasons not very often uh so i understand the freedom kevin and that would have so so to my my defense my my son's almost 13 and and i also have a 10 year old daughter i wouldn't do that with my 10 year old daughter she also wouldn't be able to handle 
uh, being in the car for more than a half an hour at a time. So yeah. it, it, my son is a special kid where I've driven from California to Toronto several times with him and he sits in the front seat and we talk and we look out the window. Uh, only some kids can do that. Right. My daughter could not do that. No. Uh, okay. Before we do anything else, uh, since we have this amazing theme song, we got to play it. Roll it, Phil. Hey, everybody. It's a nation in isolation. <laughs> it's a nation in isolation. It's a difficult situation. It's a nation in isolation. Now's not a good time for celebration. Feeling good, share the wealth, help other people with their mental health. It's a nation in isolation. Don't eat fiberglass pink insulation. Yeah. Good advice there. Ah, it's great. Awesome. I love it. You know, his stuff is so good. He's so funny. Uh, yeah, we got to get him on live more often. Uh, okay. So, uh, Kev, will you give uh, Tara and I a chance to talk about her mental health experiences and then we'll call you back? Yeah, I'm just going to go for a drive to San yeah. Fran and back again. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what? God bless you. If you want to do that, you should, you know, I don't, don't let me prevent you from fulfilling your dreams. Uh, all right. Kevin Bieksa will return in a second. But Tara, you, uh, when we talked about you coming on the show, you uh, you made it clear that wow, you had a lot of history with uh, mental illness. Uh, just you know, very briefly, let us know what that is. Well, I have suffered, and I continue to suffer from anxiety. Uh, and in retrospect, I realized that I've actually been suffering from anxiety for uh, the majority of my life. Um, but when I, I first really made this discovery, it was when I first started doing live television. I'd made the transition from music to TV, and I was working at a small station in Toronto. Um, and just the, the confluence of nerves and coffee and whatever um, hit me all at once. And I actually had a panic attack on live television. And um, you know how it works, right? Once your brain tells you something is going to happen, then it continues to happen. So from that point onward, every time the camera would come on, I started to panic. And so it, it became clear to me that um, it was either like I had to, to work this out. I had to seek help immediately or my TV career was going to be over before it started. So I went to see a cognitive <coughs> therapist. We did some work together. Um, and labeled it as anxiety. And it was really then that I understood that I was, I was one in five, you know, I am one of the Canadians who suffers from mental illness. And it was also then that I realized that some of the, the feelings that I had as a young child were indeed panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And so, you know, I have some, some tools to work through anxiety, um, when it arises, but you know, it's, it's not foolproof and it's happened again. And, um, I, I'm, I, I think it's helpful for me to talk about it and I know it helps other people as well to, to know that they're not alone. Yeah. And one of the things that I find, and thank you for sharing that is that the, the more details you give, um, the more powerful it is for someone who's listening, because, you know, you could say I suffer from panic attacks and some people will go, oh, yeah, me too. But then when you describe a few of the things that it does to you, like when I talk about depression and how it affects my self-esteem and how it affects a few other things, that's what really resonates with people. So that first time when you were on the mm. TV show, which is, you know, I, I think we can all relate to, or at least I can relate to what a nightmare that would be. What, what did you feel and what did people see? Well, I mean, it was mortifying, as you can imagine. It's a terrible feeling. Um, you know, I think we've all had nerves to a certain degree, but but this is a lot more. You know, I had all the sort of typical fight, fight, flee, uh, freeze symptoms where I started feeling kind of a low-level nausea. My palms got sweaty. Uh, my breath got shallow, and I started to feel shaky. I was standing up, um, looking at a camera. I was wearing heels which made me feel less stable on the ground. Um, and then all of a sudden I just, I felt like I couldn't breathe and I felt like I was going to faint. And so I had a clipboard in my hand. And so before that could happen, if it was indeed gonna happen, 
I just started to hyperventilate. I put the clipboard in front of my face and I said, stop. <laughs> and I mean, it's, I laugh because it makes me uncomfortable really. Um, it's, you know, before the era of, um, before the era of YouTube. So it's not living out there in perpetuity, thank goodness, but it was horrible. It was embarrassing. I didn't know what was wrong. It had never happened like that before. Um, and subsequently every day I'd go into work and I did a live show five days a week and about four o'clock every day, sweaty palms, feeling nauseous, um, a lot of self-talk, right? You, I mean, uh, and hard to drown out the, the negative self-talk and it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's this self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's, it's awful. And I, you know, there are some things I can do concretely, you know, it, these feelings come when you least expect them sometimes. And I've been sitting at the desk for, with, with next to Ron for hometown hockey. And I've had that feeling arise before. Um, now I know I'm not going to die from it, I think, <laughs> but it still happens. So there's certain things I do. I know I can't have too much coffee before a broadcast, for instance. Um, but you know, it's, mm -hmm. I do think it's, it's a little bit, you learn to live with it. You learn to work through it, but it happens still. You know, one of the things for me uh, is that I, since I was five years old uh, or as far back as I can remember, I have had a fear of throwing up. It's called emetophobia. Uh, we had my son on yesterday as a guest, you know, Corey. Uh, he, from the time he can remember, had exactly the same fear. And all kinds of different times in television when I was not feeling my best with depression, I would be panicked that I was going to throw up on television uh, where I hadn't thrown up in 15 years. So, you know, and I wasn't sick. But in my mind, it was like, oh, my God, what happens if I get sick? And it, it just it would overcome all of my thoughts. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, in the psychology world, they call it catastrophizing. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really good at that. So, you know, sometimes I try to make my positive voice louder than my negative voice when I can. And, um, you know, <laughs> Who, we had, uh, yeah, we had a guest on earlier in the week. Uh, uh, Case, who was he on with? Uh, the doctor from Utah? He was on with, was it Tessa? Tessa Virtue? Uh, I don't remember who, who he was on with, but he was a psychiatrist, right? And uh, with, the oh, with the hockey guys, sorry. It was Sheldon Surrey, Jordan Tutu, and I got this. Oh, Brent Myers. So Brent Myers played a long time ago. All three guys were right. fighters. All three guys have had addiction problems. And Sheldon Surrey was saying, you know, I, I get hit by panic attacks. And the doc said, okay, I'm going to tell you three things to do. And one of them was count backwards from 100 by sevens. So like 100, then 93, then 86, then 79, then 72, like that, right? Which I thought was really funny because I thought there's no way there's more than five guys in the NHL who could possibly do that. <laughs> but what, but um, I just was thinking about it, how effective that would be. And he was saying that that stimulates a part of your brain that will help you with the panic. Well, and also I've been told, and this is really helpful, um, and I do it before every hometown hockey broadcast is singing out loud. It, uh, it's really helpful and it may be the same part of the brain, but also, you know, it just takes you to a different place and takes you out of that cycle of overthinking. So, so, so you, when you say sing out loud, do you sing out loud? Like if you were on the set? I'll say, yeah. I mean, okay. Ron, <laughs> Ron sings too. So it's like, it's fine. We know everybody. So, right. I, you know, so I sing for like, what would you sing? I'll something silly. I'm not like Let's belting out rock and roll by Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I'll be like, what will I do when you are, you know, I just, whatever, just some, something. But that also takes you to a comfort <laughs> zone too, right? Because that was really embarrassing that I just did that. What? I've well, been no, in my house it? for way too long. Yeah. Oh God, help me. But I remember, <laughs> I, I can remember talking to you about broadcasting. And one of the things I believe I told you because I, I, this is one of the things that I'm a big believer is when you get on set, you need to warm up. And by warm up, I mean, you need to, you need to get used to the sound of your own voice. You need to get mm -hmm. used to the people that are around you that are staring at you, the idea of being heard, which you just gave me sort of a variation off of it. 
Yeah. I mean, I, that's just part of what I've always done as, as a singer and the, an actor, um, you know, so I'm, I'm always in the green room doing a lot of this and a lot of, I, I, <laughs> So, yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, it, it helps. It helps me get in my body. I, I, somebody stop me, please. Michael, this is embarrassing. What's embarrassing? <laughs> I'm sorry. this on, on but your you, show. Oh, that. Oh yeah. We'll take that out of context in a heartbeat. <laughs> Whew. Um, Gosh, it's good to see you. You know, uh, we were uh, buds for so long and we still are, but, you know, I don't get to see you very often. Uh, and this is amazing. Let's uh, let's call uh, Mr. Uh, Kevin Bieksa back into the fold and um, let's uh, let's find out what what he's got to say about uh, Sloan's story. But more than that, you know, you played, I mean, one of, remember I told you I was going to go upstairs and put a shirt on underneath this? The reason why I said that was, and I couldn't get it because it was, it was actually in the washing machine, is I wear a Rick Rippin t-shirt all the time on this show, like once every five days. And I wanted to put it on underneath and, and show you because obviously Rick is, you know, someone who is, um, you know, was very important to you. His memory is important to you. You've rewarded his memory by doing so much in mental health. But um, I was talking about when you played, do you, can you remember anybody who had panic attacks, anyone who had anxiety above and beyond, you know, the fear of losing a big game? It's funny. I didn't know if you were going to ever let me talk. That was the longest question I've ever heard on air. And uh, the funny, you know, the funny, <laughs> the funny thing me. about the funny thing about me leaving and coming back is I never actually left. I was no, I could the see time. you there. <laughs> I could see you rolling your eyes when Tara was uh, was talking. I could see you giving me like, "Oh, poor, poor person." No, Isn't no, she no. Just... But when she was making her tongue things and everything, I was. If you could see, I was taking my teeth out. So we all do our own different little things. <laughs> And it's up to you guys to edit it and make us all look good. No, this so, is live. This is there. There is no editing, and there. Uh, um, and, and clearly, if you were taking your teeth out, that is not something we would edit out. That's gold. No. So, can you like just summarize that long question so I can answer it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I I can uh, I can actually repeat it all verbatim. No, no. Stop <laughs> summary, please. Uh, okay. Did you play with anybody that you thought, okay, they have a real issue with anxiety outside of Rick, but, uh, you know, yep. in your L locker room? Lots of guys. And it, it dates back to uh, junior hockey. I played for the Burlington Cougars for three years. And our captain, who grew up in the Burlington Oakville area, I remember he was a great guy. He was like a fourth liner, but he was the captain because he was such a really, he was a good guy. He's a great teammate, treat everyone well. But he used to go into the bathroom before every game and throw up. And puke, funny, like you make mention of it. And uh, I don't know if anything ever came out, but he would go in the bathroom before every game, home or on the road, and really loudly dry heave. Where, and everybody at first was kind of like, what's going on? Is he sick? And then it became common every single game. And he was just nervous. And this is, this is going back to the 90s when you know there wasn't a whole lot out there about mental health and anxiety and depression yeah sorry to interrupt but i haven't heard my voice in a few seconds so i'm kind of yeah, desperate go, for go it. Ahead. but but back in that time it would be unprecedented for a junior hockey player to come out and say you know i uh, like i got i got you know problems with anxiety or depression like any of these sort of garden variety mental illnesses you never heard anyone say that yeah and there were there was no education and there was still the stigma where he was, a, he was a bit of a fighter and a guy who would stick up for teammates. So you, this big, tough fighter who's the captain, he would never come out and say, I'm super anxious. I, I have mental health issues. And it took – that's why the last time I was on the show, I kind of pumped your tires a little bit. Not that you need it, but we've come so long in 25 years, and you're a big part of it. Uh, and, and other athletes like Robert uh, – sorry, Robin Leonard uh, that came out in the NHL Awards and said he suffers from – uh, mental health issues and it's um, it's mainstream now to tell people that you're suffering it's not you're not looked at as uh, somebody who's weak in any capacity it's a normal thing to talk about and and that's great because people can now deal with it and get the proper treatment Sloan when uh, when you used to do OTR a lot did you have did we ever talk about me suffering from depression because at different times it was not a factor in my life but you would have been you know, for sure, I would have been hanging out with you at times when I was was really, really sick. You were not as vocal about it then. Um, 
as you know, in your timeline, but I, we definitely had conversations about it. Um, and, you know, I, I for sure would have been having some low points in, in my life. Um, the, the music industry was like that for me those years. So for sure, I, I have recollections of sitting somewhere on College Street with you and, and having those conversations. But I, I don't think I knew the, the extent to which you were suffering at that time. Well, I've inflated it over the years because if people give you a little sympathy for a little pain, oh my God, if you talk about like big pain, you get big sympathy. So yeah, I blew it up over the years, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, no, um, COVID-19, I'm going to ask uh, Kevin first and then I'll ask you and then we'll find out who else is on the line. Uh, Kevin, how are you doing with COVID-19? You said that you're out with uh, with your wife and your kids, that you went down to the beach. Uh, you know, I, I see you uh, as a hugely positive guy who would look at um, and only... Um, that you wouldn't belabor the fact that we don't have a lot of choices in our life right now. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, I feel like I can handle these kind of situations fairly well. I, I would say like, if anything's crept in, it's, it's irritability a little bit. Uh, but we we're not at the point where we can go that we're comfortable as a family going down to the beach, but we certainly drove by it and just kind of saw everybody out there. And, and that's, they're slowly trying to reopen everything the thing that we're kind of concerned about is is just um, like our immunity. Once we do open things up, we've been sitting in this house, and my daughter, who suffers the probably the most in our family with anxiety, she's been sitting in the house for two, three months and hasn't gone outside bar- at all, barely. She's went on a couple scooter rides with her best friend, only one person that she'll go and be anywhere within twenty feet of. And think about what her immune system's like right now. It's probably so weak. So. We have to slowly expose her to going out and to being around people in public so she can build up her immune system. So when we do open everything up, hopefully in the fall or end of summer, she's not just getting the common cold or getting all these viruses, right? So it's a delicate subject in my house. And uh, like I said, my 10-year-old is the one that we've had to have a lot of conversations with and and reinforce things and reassure her. Uh, But me personally, yeah, I've handled it well, but... um, Everyone's different, right? For sure. Tara? Well, so I have a 10-year-old daughter as well who may very well hear me, but I, I would say where I'm really feeling the impact is, is with her, the lack of um, peer interaction. I mean, homeschooling, everybody knows it's, I mean, it's so anxiety-inducing for me, for her, for my husband, um, for all of us. But I just really feel with her, uh, I just she also has some anxiety and so i you know she's really nervous about even going out for walks and um yeah i I just i worry about the lack of of peer interaction you know that's just a normal part of um your social upbringing so but you know all of that being said like i always acknowledge that we're very privileged here i have a roof over my head we have food to eat um you know we're, we're doing okay everybody is healthy but I won't lie. Like we have our moments and, and it, it's challenging also. You know, it'd be amazing. And I, I'm not suggesting this cause I, I wouldn't want to make anybody, you know, go, no, I no, she couldn't do this, but it would be awesome um, for both of your 10 year old daughters to, uh, to do this setting um, with me, someone who would open up by talking about, you know, all of my struggles and especially the anxiety that I had as a kid, mm-hmm. which really ran my life. I think that would be, uh, that would be amazing. So maybe we'll talk about it later. Uh, we should. We should. Okay. Well, let's, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's meet, uh, Oh God, he's become my, like I said before, my BFF. Like he, uh, yes. Well, what do you mean? He's shaking his head. No, his name is Sean Cullen. And (laughs) he uh, is uh, so talented at so many different things. And I keep learning things about him. Oh, he wrote three books and oh, you know, he does drawings. And it's like, you know, you you make me sick, Sean, for all the things you do. Thank you. It's great to be reviled. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. How you doing? I'm great. I'm fine. It's a beautiful day to be stuck inside again. It's amazing. Yeah, Looking yeah I hope. It's tremendous. Tremendous. Well, you, uh, you, uh, well, you and Sean, uh, you and Tara Sloan know each other, uh, I guess, just from the entertainment business, right, in Canada. Sure. Uh, from, the, from the biz. 
from the biz. And uh, you met Kevin moments ago. Uh, you are a, a huge hockey fan. So you can, even in the most self-serving way, just say to Kevin, big fan, Kevin, big fan. <laughs> he was a hard-nosed player. A hard he was. And an excellent player. Although Thank Doug, you. Tom Cherry could never say his name properly. Which okay, always- hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get to that in a second. So Sean has agreed to uh, to uh, be our quiz master f- for today. Uh, oh. He'll do it in any character that we ask him. He's going to ask Kevin questions about Tara and Tara questions about Kevin. And we'll see how much you guys know about each other. <laughs> but first, let's find out what you win if, in fact, you are the winner. Roll it, Phil. Winners of the Isolation Nation quiz take home a collection of Sick Not Weak tops. You know the ones the host wears every day? My God, does the guy even wash them? You'll get whatever's left. So, Tara, don't take it personally when you get a men's triple XL. And Kevin, since you stopped lifting, that kid's small may actually work. Wow. Yeah, so you, uh, you know, it's... uh, it's it's worth trying your hardest for this. So, Sean, uh, I know you have questions um, that yep. you have written all of these questions yourself. And uh, why don't you, uh, I'll just throw different people that you might impersonate uh, and you can uh, use it or not use it if you don't do the person. But, uh, you know, William Shatner is, uh, I think I've heard you do William Shatner. All right. So, Kevin, this question is about <laughs> Tara is what religion? A, a Buddhist. B, a Jew. C, Mormon. Or D, that one that knocks on your door and asks for money. Oh, what's that? Uh, that's a Jehovah's Witness, right? Yeah. I would say she's a Mormon, just judging by her reaction. <laughs> well, I'm wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> she, is, she is actually a Buddhist. <laughs> no, she's not. Buddhism isn't even a religion. <laughs> Buddhist. The way of life. Am, well, okay. You're way right. It's a philosophy Buddhism. and a way of life. But I am a, yes. I am indeed a Buddhist. There you go. Okay, interesting. I'm well read in Buddhism, actually. Oh, can you spell? Bu- t- <laughs> can you spell Buddhism? Of course, I can. Let's hear it. B u d d h i s m. Oh, nice, sweet. Yeah, that was good. You got one for Tara now. I'll have one for Tara. Okay, let's go with uh, I don't know uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, let me get settled here. Okay. I'll... Tara, when asked to name something quirky about himself, <laughs> one of his answers was A, he's an obsessive disinfector. B, an obsessive vacuumer. C, an obsessive phone talker. Or D, an obsessive purchaser of Nike shoes. So that's Kevin. So you get four choices. He's an obsessive one of those. I'm going to say you're an obsessive vacuumer. (laughs) Is that right? That's correct. Really? Yeah. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. But good job with the uh, Nike shoe purchaser. I'm turning into one of those. You you know, if you're truly, I I have uh, a handful of guys used to play for the Argos who I've stayed buddies with, one of them named Byron Parker. Oh, we're talking about you again? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? Bring it on. Uh, (laughs) So he he told me that if you really are a, a shoe purchaser, you buy two of the same kind. One, you leave them in the box and they are now part of your collection and the other one you wear. Because you can't that's, wear the ones that you collect. That's just stupid. I'm just tell, I'm just reporting the facts. All right, you can next wear, up. wear, collect, and take care of them. Anyways, next up. Uh, uh, yeah, next up. Uh, vacuumer. Do uh, you want to give buff us a Winston, Winston Churchill being a World War II buff as I am? Uh, I would love to hear some Winston Churchill. This question is for <laughs> Kevin Bexa. She 
By she, I mean Tara. <laughs> had a Motley Crue band member play on one of her albums. Was it A, Nikki Six, B, Big Mars, C, Vince Neil, or D, the enormous penis Tommy <laughs> Lee? Wishful thinking, Tommy Lee? That is incorrect, sir. No, it's correct. Neil. No, it's correct. It's it correct. Well, actually, the, the truth the is, church? he didn't play on my album. He was in my video. Right, video, and I believe I since I wrote these questions out, I'm going to see whether I made that mistake. <laughs> no. She had a Motley Crue band member on one of her albums, was it? So I, uh, so he misread that, didn't get the answer right. I don't know what the fuck is going on, Churchill. He wasn't technically on the album. He was standing near the album, and part of him stuck into it. Yes, so yes. That's what happened. Uh, okay, uh, let's keep her going. And you now, uh, the score is uh, remains tied at one. And uh, you can pick any of these questions because we won't get to all of them. But why don't you, uh, why don't you give me some meatloaf? Well, it's time to ask a question of my Kevin B. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Tara Sloan. <laughs> Famed HNIC Don Cherry host used to call him A, a real sissy, B, a real beauty, C, Kevin B. Esca, or D, K. B. I know for a fact it's B. Esca. Oh, God. Now, now say it four times. Say it four times fast. Yes, can be a, it's good. Okay. You can't do it. It's so confusing. Honestly, like it gets in your head. Uh, you, you must have had fun with that, right, Kev? Uh, I did. I, I met Don thing. Cherry when I was like five years old. He, he uh, I think I've told the story before, but we used to go to his restaurant in Hamilton for our end of the year banquets. And then he drafted me the OHL, which he probably doesn't remember. So I have a long history with, with Don. And I think I'm told by Ron that he always knew how to pronounce my name, but it was kind of part of his shtick. And uh, I mean, we're talking right now, so it worked. It's true. Yeah, you know, there, there was something, uh, there's something endearing about consistency, right? You know, yeah. like it becomes, it becomes your thing. Okay, why don't you ask, uh, this next question is for, uh, is for Kevin. Why don't you ask him the, uh, hold on one sec here. Let's go with the, uh, What's the uh, first food that that one and do okay. it in whatever voice you want. And we will try to uh, unravel who it is. And if we can't do it, um, it's embarrassing. Kevin. The Here's a question for you. <laughs> That's Jay Leno. Right. What is the first food Tara says she will go for? When she breaks isolation, Panzerato, Poutine, McDonald's, or barley meal honey balls, a real Buddhist tree. Oh, interesting. You can't tell me you haven't had McDonald's once during quarantine. She's not telling you anything. That's the point oh, yeah, of this. yeah, I'm not telling you anything. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually frozen. <laughs> as opposed to hesitant. No, let's let's play it along. Uh, okay, Kevin, I understand. You don't know the answer. Can you subtract, let's say, three from ten? No, okay. We'll go with some smaller numbers now. <laughs> you want to ask him a question, Sean, while he's frozen? Hey, do you think you could beat me in a fight? Nah. I guess no. not. Uh, okay, well, I don't, I'm not quite sure what happened uh, with him. Uh, you know, it could have just been a really sucky move on his part where he went, I don't know the answer, so I'm just going to pretend like, you know, I'm just going to stop breathing and just pretend like I'm, uh, I'm still here. I'm frozen. He's, uh, he's gone. Should I reveal the answer or should we wait for him? Uh, yeah, you can reveal the answer. I'm a poutine fanatic. I don't have it a lot, but I think about it a lot. It's a delightful treat. 
It is a delightful treat. treat. All of the fats. Not a fan. Not a fan of poutine. What? I'm oh, not. Why? I find it gross. How about fries no. are great on their own. Like, what? What? Why do you gotta? Why do you gotta give the French fry a boost? The French fry rocks. Well, well French fries without gravy are nothing. And then add the cheese, and you're right, Sean. All the fat. All the fats, and there's a great uh, variation: smoked meat poutine, mm-hmm. which is killer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Delight. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, it, it seems like uh, oh, Kevin oh, is. He's now back. He's horizontal, <laughs> um, but let's wait. For Sorry about that, guys. Vertical. Uh, Didn't pay the Wi-Fi vertical. bill. <laughs> we'll put him back on uh, when he, you got to go vertical. Uh, but there we go. There he is. There we go. And uh, that concludes the uh, first ever, um, you know, Tara Sloan versus Kevin Biesca quiz hosted by Sean Cullen. You know, people have demanded it for a long time. Oh, that was excellent. Amazing. Yeah, we, Sean. Yes. Uh, why don't you uh, Why don't you sing us out with a? I loved your Gordon Lightfoot, but I haven't heard your Neil Young. So yeah, give us a little of that, and then we'll come back and I'll just say goodbye to these guys. It's over now. The show is done. We've got to say goodbye. Okay, go light foot. Go light foot. Go light foot. But I'm gonna have to teach you how to love. I got that bit screwed up there. Don't cry for me. Cause isolation nation is done. Whoa. We'll still have more fun some other day. Oh my god, is that Bob Dylan? Is that Bob Dylan in there? I think I see Bob Dylan. Ourselves for who we really are inside with our anxieties and our fears and the things we try to hide. Oh my. Oh gosh, Leonard Cohen, <laughs> I love you so much. We miss you so much. Let's 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 try to tune into the spirit of Leonard Cohen. Leonard, can you speak to us? I miss you so much. It's time to say. Goodbye, isolation nation is done. Oh, we had some fun. That was enough, I think. That was awesome, man. Oh, so God. Good. That was so, so good. good. Yeah. You know who, like Tara was sitting there going nuts. Kevin's sitting there like stone faced. I, I don't know what <laughs> you got to do, Sean, to day. impress him. He sees it every day. He's he does it every day. He's unbelievable. He's a multi man. No, that was, was very. It's very good. No, yeah, thanks. So good. Who's that behind you? I'm, some young guy. Oh, gross. There you Back go. in his prime. Back in his prime. That was on the floor at the Masonic Temple where we shot for. Uh, you would have been there, Sloan, a, a number of times. Mm-hmm. Um, that was yeah, a publicity picture on the floor there. Yeah. Look at those lips. Look at those lips. <laughs> Supple and smooth, luscious. Mm. I don't see those All right. those characteristics. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm okay with that. I only certain. It's like a hologram. It depends how you look at me. You look at me with you know a, a little jealousy and a little bitterness <laughs> that I achieved so much in my life, and you've done fuck all, losing Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Finals in 2011 to what was probably an inferior Boston Bruins team. True, they were shit. Uh, yeah, yeah and that's Tim, a t- you that's lost a dagger. You, yeah, you lost to uh, a goaltender who was really weird. Tim Thomas, really just a weird human being. And small. You should, you should rename this show "Daggers in Isolation" and Daggers just uh, isolation. make fun of all your guests. All right, I've made fun of Tara Sloan or uh, Sean no. Cullen, um, not at all. But it's it's a sign of affection. Yeah. All right, thank you. Kevin, great to see you, man. Um, think about uh, whether you, you could come on with your uh, with your daughter and Tara. Same thing. Uh, I just I think that it would be unbelievably um, good for all of us, but also um, you know other ten year old girls. 
you know, who have never heard anyone talk about it. There's my daughter right there. I would there. love to do that. Hi. Oh, hi. What hi. is that? Hey, Audrey. Oh Can you come God. down here for one second, please? She has a 10-year-old daughter as well. She might not show up. And this here, funny sweetie. guy I've known since you before you were born. Oh. That's and true. this funny guy just sings weird songs. That's true. I need you just real quick. <laughs> I just just make an appearance. Just come here. We're this talking somebody about I want like you to meet in California. From come. the corona coronavirus anxieties. <laughs> come. She's saying she no. can <laughs> come you over know. here, my come. daughter. Come on, Cleopatra. <laughs> Just come what? here. Oh. Audrey, I forgot you internet. have a 10-year-old too. Oh my gosh. Come. come. You just gave me the finger and walked away. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> come here. Oh, that's just, awesome. Just poke your head in. Just to prove you actually exist. Hi. She can't hear because I'm wearing Hello. this no. is Audrey. See? Hi, Audrey. Oh, they're all saying hi. She oh, can't this is so awesome. Okay, phone. well, um, you uh, you talk Please. to your respective daughters and find out if they <laughs> would uh, talk to me about uh, you know this crappy COVID nineteen thing. Um, thanks, guys. Tara, love Thank you. you. I better let her go. Love you, Sean. Love you, Kevin. Nice like you a lot. All you ladies. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Let's roll thanks. the theme, Bye. or let's uh, let's say we're done. This was great. Love, Kevin.